So this is an example of a persona. Specifically, this is an example of a primary persona. And I want you to look at all the different elements because they're the elements that we talked about in last, last class. So what's the first thing that stands out? The picture. <laughs> right, so you do want to make sure that you have a picture. It helps us connect with who our persona is going to be. Now, I will tell you that for assignment four, I'm very liberal when it comes to the picture. You must have one. But I have had students in the past who've put aliens, who've put bunny rabbits, who've put supermodels. And that's fine for class. Just don't do that when you go out into the workforce. All right, so it does have, you know, we do have an image. Helps us connect to that individual. It has a name. Our name is Ernest, the engaged employee. So Ernest is his first name, D is his middle name, engaged employee is his last name. Really do give him a name. So there's personal information. So it talks about the profession, right? Their age, their background, originally from upstate New York. What's their education? Do you think what, what their education is will be really important to your design? Yes. <coughs> now, in this case, it says UCB background. UCB is the organization, happens to be a, a university, the, uni the, the organization that this person works for. So what is their background in the organization? They fell into a technical position eight years ago while working in the libraries. What's his home life like? Been married for 15 years, has two children, ages 6 and 13. Their family has a bit cockatoo. He is interested in volunteering sometime at his six-year-old's Montessori school in Berkeley. Hobbies, photography, such as learning Photoshop. Personality, efficient, detail, excuse me, detail-oriented, dedicated. Enjoys meeting new people, learning about them. Now, can you look at those demographics and see how they might be relevant? Yes? No. Some more than others? That's because if you look at that information, there are two, you know, basically two purposes. One, again, is to help us connect with who our users are. But the other is, is that it does give us some information about who our users may be. So if we look at something like, okay, hobbies, photography, he's learning Photoshop. What's something that that could tell you? Is this someone who is afraid of technology? Okay, well, you know, you can say, well, you know, he's a data architect. He is with technology. Is he someone that can learn on his own? Certainly seems like it. You don't know for sure. I know you're like, mm, I don't know about that. But, you know, it can give you a little sense of, yeah, possibly. Gives you a little bit more knowledge about your potential users. Now, let's look at the user goals, pain points, and side objectives, because those are really, really relevant to your design, user goals, to be as efficient as possible at work so he can spend as much quality time with his family as possible. To make more money, everyone wants that, right? To continue to learn, to improve his photography and perhaps make, make it more of a business. What are some of the things that these user goals might tell you? His family is important. All right, he wants to be able to go in, be very efficient with his job, do it quickly, do it easily, do it right, so he doesn't have to be working all this overtime because he's dealing with a system that is problematic. All right, pain points. After the IST reorg, some processes have been unclear, and he's often had to hunt around for the right person to get things done. There are too many passwords to remember, too many collaborative tools being used in an organization, and information he needs is all over the place. It is not organized efficiently. So these are pain points. Keep in mind, not just about a specific application. These power are pain points in terms of the types of things he is trying to accomplish in terms of his goal. Side objectives, strongly related, help Ernest find the information he needs quickly and easily, clarify the IST slash OCIO information available instead of just adding another site to the confusion, and help Ernest learn about and connect with the community. So, in terms of 
a technological approach? What's something that you can take from this? That would be really, really important. What do you think? Should you just create another system where you are not trying to integrate the uh, password capabilities? Or you just have to kind of remember another password? No? You're right. What makes you think that? Well, since information is all over the place, it's not organized, too many passwords, too many collaborative tools. So you don't want to just create some silo, slap it on a website and say, here you go. Because that will exacerbate the problems. Now, from a technology standpoint, does that cause a, um, I don't say a problem, more of a difficulty for you? Yes. Who knows how difficult it is to create a single sign-on system? When you have five, six, seven, eight separate systems on the back end and your users want one password to log into everything. Not easy. Has anyone experienced I would say you've experienced it. You never want to experience it again. I can understand. None of you, the rest of you haven't experienced it before? Okay, let me give you some advice. If you get a job and they say, do you want to volunteer to help us design and set up the single, the single sign in password system? Run the other way. Because it really is very different. I've had students who've complained, why did it take FIU so long to have single sign on? It's actually not even completely single sign on now, but it's a lot better than it was even two years ago. It's because it's extremely, extremely difficult. You're dealing with a lot of different systems that have different requirements that have not only just requirement, different requirements for the passwords, but different requirements in terms of communication and security and all sorts of things. Fun. So things that when you look on your personas that talk about difficulties that they have, it's not for a specific application or application domain, but in terms of what's keeping them from reaching their goals, very important in the design process. Make sense? So, you guys are ready to create some personas? No? That's okay, you don't have to create them until you start assignment four. All right, any questions? So I want you to remember when you are creating your personas for assignment four, do refer to this as an example. And remember, most of the time when you are creating personas, you are creating them at the very beginning of the design process. You don't necessarily already have a product. So, you want to talk about the user's goals, not difficulty they have with your specific product because you may not have one yet. Make sense? Or you can email me and ask me if you're not sure.